Hey guys, now that the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer is out, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. I did a breakdown and analysis on the channel, but I felt like it would make more sense if I got two other guys in here that are well informed in Jurassic to give me kind of a really, really good discussion about it. So, I've got some guys from Dangerville down here. Uh, you guys can go ahead and introduce yourselves. What's up everyone? This is Jacob. Is it? Well, because I'm Alistair. Uh, hello guys, how's it going? All right, so we're basically going to be talking about the trailer, our initial thoughts on it, and then we're going to be talking about something very, very important for the Jurassic Park franchise. Something that we haven't really gotten too into since The Lost World, in my personal opinion. So I'm going to start with you, Alistair, first. What are your general thoughts on the trailer? I really I like it a lot. I like it a lot more than the first trailer. Of course, it is quite short because they had to kind of slip it into the Super Bowl. Uh, but I, I, it's really hopeful and there are so many cool shots in the trailer. There's so many things that get me excited for it. So, yeah, a lot more hopeful about this movie than it was before. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. Uh, <laughs> now, Jacob, well, what do you think about the trailer? All right, so I really got to watch the trailer in like all its finest glory, you know. So I, I was big on the Super Bowl. My team is the Eagles, and so I was I was there. I was nice. hyped. I was in the moment. I had myself a little bit of a buzz going on, and when I started to hear the classic Jurassic Park music start a humming, and I see some dinosaur action going on, oh boy, it really added to that that moment and. Uh, I don't know if it was my adrenaline, my excitement of this situation or not, but I really, really enjoyed this trailer. And it's like, they showed a lot in it, but they didn't show enough to where I feel like I was like ripped off from the experience that I'm going to get. Yeah. It still felt like, like they were hiding enough, but we did get a lot and a really good, uh, a, a real good look at the, uh, the Indoraptor along with some, some other scenes of during the part where they're still on the island. So overall... I really like the trailer, and I'm going to have to say I liked it more than the first one as well. Right, so I think that everyone across the, the board, if you were going to go see this movie, or if you weren't going to go see this movie, regardless of the fact, I think we can all agree that the second trailer was far better than the first. And the main reason I think that this trailer came out and showed all of the footage from the second half of the movie, or what we're assuming to be the predominantly second half of the film, was that underwhelming feeling that a lot of people felt for the first trailer. Um, I tried to tell people, I swear to God I did. I was like, guys, calm down. It's going to it's gonna come. Just have a little bit of faith because, you know, the, the Jurassic Park fan community is very vocal about not being spoiled. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, take, uh, they take that shit really seriously. So, As they should. Of course. Uh, I, from my understanding, the Indominus Rex was kind of spoiled by a Lego leak. Uh, Back in 2015, before the movie even came out, so they're pretty. I think uh, I kind of remember something on that. Yeah, they're pretty apprehensive about seeing anything that they shouldn't. That being said, the trailer was, in my opinion, awesome. I mean, I, I think I've already explained how I felt about it uh, in an earlier video. But here is the root of the video discussion: How scary do you guys think this new movie will truly be? How ominous, how mysterious, how much of a horror, thriller, suspense? What are we exactly looking at here? I think it's going to be the first Jurassic movie to attempt to be a scary movie. And now that, that kind of sounds a little weird because I'm pretty sure Jurassic Park 3 kind of tried to do that. But they still tried to keep it in the realms of these dinosaurs are just wild animals for the most for the most part. Other than the Spinosaurus somehow managing to be everywhere at once, it seemed like. They still seemed like they're kind of still... Uh, animals, I'd say, with how the movie was laid out. This one, what, or at least what we got in this trailer, the part in the mansion, this is it, just the way it's filmed, the way the atmosphere is, and just the Indoraptor getting all these crazy, like, we don't, we're not getting any quick, or I mean, we're not getting any long shots. Obviously, it's a trailer, but we're getting, like, these quick bursts of it, and it just, it reminds me of classic horror more than any of the other Jurassic movies. Yeah, I think that's a really solid point, uh, Personally, I feel like this film is going to be far darker and far far more intense. I think that's that's a really good word to use. It's going to be way more intense than anything we saw definitely in Jurassic World, Jurassic Park 3. Hopefully more intense than the first two films. But there's the genuine, like, because obviously you've got things like the volcano, which is on the verge of being 
over the top for the Jurassic Park franchise. Just a little because bit. Because yeah. just a little <laughs> bit. So for the second half, they then go, okay, now we're pulling back ridiculously. Now we've got such a tight space, such a scary, mm. tight like claustrophobic film that you're going to have to sit there and watch. You've got the adrenaline over, and now once the adrenaline is in your system, we're going to make you like we're going to make you terrified. <laughs> like essentially, that's their that's their goal here. And it's um, it, obviously you've got you've got things like the Indoraptor, which is probably going to be terrifying because because they, they know they know they can't make the Velociraptors like scary again. Like we we've seen them right, so yeah. many times. We've seen them scary in the first one, the second one, the third one. And their, their mm. idea is, okay, let's just make a different spin on them. Let's make them the protector this time uh, to the mutants that humanity keeps creating. Essentially, it's kind of like a, a nature versus man's in ignorance kind of thing going on. So the, I, I suspect we're going to have a lot of that kind of combat between nature and, and you know the, the mutant creature, which we don't know if it has other things, other DNA mixed into yeah. it, or if it's just more raptor DNA. But uh, I'm expecting some pretty terrifying scenes, like dead, like dinosaurs scattered throughout, like whatever like environment they're in. If they're in like the mansion and whatever animals there's there, I want to see their like guts like on the walls as this as this <laughs> Indoraptor's going through it and tearing everything to pieces. Like they could be terrifying. Yeah, that's that's really really good points that you've made, and I think that you brought up something uh, really important too about the raptors not being uh, scary this time around. And this is a, you know, every fan's going to have their own opinion on this new direction that the series is going for. But I want to I want to start by saying, as uh, someone who's loved this series my entire life, and someone who read the original novel. Now, the first movie does follow the the first novel's events quite. Uh, quite closely with the exception of a, a few things but thematically the tone of the novel has never been replicated in the films and that tone of the novel it, it goes for it's a horror book specifically there's very early on a woman in costa rica finds a baby in a basket and she leaves it because she hears birds chirping and that's like a good omen for a new birth so she doesn't think anything about it she goes back into the room after the chirping is quieted down and there's combies all around the uh, all around the basket, and they lift their heads up, mm. and they're just bloody. They've they've killed this oh, gosh. Ch- child pretty badly, and oh, wow. that actually happens quite a lot throughout both Jurassic Park and the Lost World books. And they've never dived into the, I guess you could say, the more violent, more vicious, yeah. Crichton created monsters. They've, they yeah, they've, they've they never got that, into the they? reality of mm. it. And they what, tried they that wanna... kind of with the Lost World intro, but like obviously they cut away because it's True. Steven Spielberg and he right. can't show that much horror. Yeah, and uh, the reason for that was Crichton wrote Jurassic Park through the eyes of a child, and the book was you know pretty wondrous. But every time he turned in a draft, they turned it down because they said this sucks. We want something violent and evil. And when he wrote the book like that, he came to Spielberg and was like, "Hey." I'm going to do, or, you know, he ended up making a first draft and it was basically like he originally intended. And it was, you know, PG 13, whereas the book is a hard R it's uh the book is not for children. And huh. I think that now that we're progressing into Jurassic world fallen kingdom, we're on part five. Now, I think that what better way to really stay fresh and go forward than to dive into some of these genetic evil creatures that were there from the beginning, specifically the Indoraptor itself. This thing's, pretty fucking evil looking it, it to me <laughs> the, the first thing that came to my mind was uh aliens uh yeah it, uh, it just it oozes that xenomorph kind of evil evil thing that is just unstoppable force and i'm personally i love that it's relegated to one dinosaur and the genetic freak dinosaur uh with them going in the direction of the raptors being imprinted on and you know they're raised that's that's all good and nice it's birds it's what they've been talking about since the first film i think there was some concerns over jurassic world's t-rex being defanged uh but that's that's not really the case in the new movie as far as i know because we got owen jumping through the jaws and it's about to snap shut and eat him but mm. uh, there's that one scene, the one shot which I absolutely adore of the T Rex looking up at the helicopter with the like, lightning in the background. That oh, looks yeah. beautiful. And whatever is happening there, it looks like they're trying to run away from the T Rex, which is obviously attacking them. So the T Rex is going to be having some inclusion there. I can't wait that for that. That would be nice. 
yeah, it'd be nice to see the T-Rex kind of be be triumphant and scary again. Because even though in Jurassic World, uh, Rexy came in and had that awesome fight scene with the Indominus, the T-Rex was never scary in that movie we never had that that fear of the the first two jurassic movies to where the t-rex was like when he's when the t-rex comes around run (laughs) bad things are gonna happen like you need to get out of there and that's something that we didn't see in jurassic park 3 because he croaked in about 10 seconds (laughs) and in lost world because rexy was more of like the hero character so it'd be sweet to see the t-rex scary again what's really puzzling about that scene though you know the scene where he's running out of the t-rex's mouth is that they have a completely cgi t-rex there and that's 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 the that's the area that they made the animatronic T-Rex. So mm-hmm. they've, they, obviously they just went, oh, the the animatronic we have isn't advanced enough to make it move around that much. So let's just let's just have that bit in CGI. I so I hope they don't too. then plus the rest of that with CGI. I hope they don't go, no, nah, it doesn't look good enough. Let's make the rest of it CGI. Yeah, it'd be annoying if they just use the um, the animatronics for scenes where the dinosaur isn't doing anything other than just like yeah. laying still, breathing. Or well, that's something, what that's uh, what I that's what I guess is going to be because you that T Rex is designed for that trailer. I don't think you're going to see the t- an animatronic T Rex outside of that, which is going to be really disappointing. But like, I'm expecting it, so I won't be too disappointed. Like there's again the scene of the raptor. I reckon you're only going to see that animatronic there. And for, the, for every other shot, you've seen like a model, like just a static model that like the CGI team is going to use for lighting. Uh, but like, there's another there's a scene where they they show the enhancement of CGI. Though you know that scene where it's, I think it's the Indoraptor has its mouth open in front of some guy, like oh, just yeah, yeah, screaming. Yeah. You can see the difference because in like one of the um, like like the featurettes they made, there's like a, a shot of that. And then in the actual trailer, they've in, like made, added in saliva and they've added like the throat like moving, and it does look really good. Yeah, I think a good merge is very possible and something I hope they take an, uh, advantage of. You know, a little touch up. But you're right. Uh, I don't know why they replaced the animatronic in the trailer for the CGI. I mean, maybe they couldn't get it to work or something. I don't really. I, I wasn't there, but I will say that yeah. animatronics, man. During the first two films, especially during, uh, let's say, the attack on the Ford Explorers and the trailers going over the cliff, those animatronic Rexes were pretty freaking scary. Yeah, yeah, they really made a difference, and I feel like, I don't know, I don't really like how they use the CG. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, I'm not going to complain about it, but I feel like a little bit of strategic kind of filming, like putting the camera in the right place, looking at Chris Pratt... And then still having the animatronic kind of open the mouth and bite and all that stuff. I think they could have done that, but maybe it wasn't safe being in a small area. They didn't want to crush Chris yeah. Pratt. Chris Brad- Here's what I, I want to know. know. Like, where's Bryce Dallas Howard? That's during, a good point. Because she's like in that scene with him. And then during all that shit, I don't know if she's further back there getting squashed, but she's not there like while he's jumping through uh, the jaws. So I'm assuming she might have went off to do yeah. something. <laughs> but uh, the, I think the shot where you see the Indoraptor about to reach out for the girl, I think like yes. the close of his mouth. I'm pretty sure that's a like an actual model. I can think that's an actual practical. Oh, oh, I think the it mouth. is too. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a mixture of both. I think yeah. it's they use the head and like you said, they kind of altered in some CG, which I really think is probably going to be hopefully the future of monster filming, to where they have the animatronic but add in CG. I think that'd be look. You know, really and that cool, shot is terrifying as well. Yeah, it's yeah, scary. It's great, it's really, isn't it, it looks like a monster movie, not a not a dinosaur movie. That's kind of. I feel like that's what they need to go if they're going to advance with this hybrid plot. I know that a lot of people don't like that. I don't like it personally, but I like that yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it to where it's there for a reason. Scare it. Tell have this cautionary tale about this terrible genetic creature that you've created and uh, teach the lesson to us humans don't do stupid stuff yeah exactly and i think that (laughs) just when i look back at the let's say the first book there are a lot of dinosaurs that are there that are really oddball weird there's one raptor in particular during the river raft scene that could camouflage and they don't talk about it much they're like what the hell is that raptor changing colors and, of, mm. of course, there's the Carnotaurus in the second book that could camouflage. But they are in 
this film, I think, finally implementing the fact that, hey, some of these dinosaurs aren't exactly as accurate as their real-life counterparts, and when we cook up something that we probably shouldn't have, we get a nightmare. We, we get a really, really bad monster that we shouldn't even have attempted to explore. Uh, and I, I love the imagery that they're using with it, because it's, it's something primal. It's something like from an old folk tale of reaching into the, the bed. But it's also got yeah. that futuristic... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like a Grim Reaper kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, a, at the same time, you know what it is. It's a genetic freak that man has created. So there's something really ominous and disturbing about the look, yeah. especially I, at the I, face. Yeah, I think the like the idea, like, if it is, like, really smart, and the other one, the, Indo- the Indominus Rex was killing for sport, I, wanna, I want the, like, Indoraptor to be killing because it resents its own life. It's like, why did you create me? And it's literally <laughs> killing everything. That's a good possibility, too, because if the other one was mostly T-Rex, and the T-Rexes are obviously not as smart as the Raptors, right, yeah. and this one's more Raptor, then... If, and then the Indominus was still super smart, like, smarter than the, the normal dinosaurs, right? So... If this one's the raptor version of that, I mean, it's going to be like looking at human, knowing exactly what you are. If you did something to it when it was a baby, it's going to know and it's going to come back to you, which may be why it's going after the one guy with that epic, you know, that roar shot that we yeah, got. I he love could that. be getting some revenge. He could have kicked him or something when he was a baby, beat up on him. Mm. And I think he'd be smart enough to know, like, would kick there a you baby are, dinosaur. Mofo. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of psychopath do you have to be to go this sound this is a good idea let's kick like something that's going to become like five times as big as me <laughs> what i like so much about that that idea of like because they're they are playing with that by the way the animal abuse thing in the movie mm. what i like so much about this uh endoraptor kind of thing if it has been abused and if it is this smart we might be able to get like some very interesting scenes in close quarters, suspenseful areas that we haven't really honestly seen since the first film. Like, do you remember when you found out the Velociraptors figured out how to open doors? Like, yeah. like that, that's extremely scary. And they've never followed up on that, by the way. They've never, you know, learned how to do other things. I guess in Jurassic World, they, they kind of did something, and then Jurassic Park 3, they were like, hey, they can communicate, and I've got my They can raptor. pretend to be statues. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Alan! I'm... <laughs> Learned how to say Alan. <laughs> but uh, with, with Fallen Kingdom, I want to see something intelligent to do something cruel and fucked up. Honestly, I, I want to see something dark, something intense, Make the Jurassic Park movie that go for it. Go all you got Bayona, you've got the tone, you've got the thematic elements of the book where it's a cautionary tale of a monster. I hope they go for it, man. I really want to see the yeah. Lost World meets Aliens. Yes, and I, I, that's I'm all aboard. <laughs> I think that that's that's honestly that's why I'm so excited to see this movie. Other people are, are probably having other reasons, but to me. I want to see the the very very primal and very dark Jurassic sequel that I've been waiting to see for years. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be closer to Alien more than Aliens, just to, just to clarify, because yeah, obviously yeah, you've got the one point. Alien Alien, and and as far as we know, it's the only Indoraptor that exists in the film. Yeah, as far as we know, yeah. Dun dun dun! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now. If they reveal that in the next trailer, like you ruined a cool plot point. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Speaking of the original Alien in this new movie, do you think that that could be something that we uh, dive into as far as the alien finding places to hide where no one knows where it is, and maybe that's when the Indoraptor kind of strikes and takes people out one at a time, or. Something well, like reaches down from below and pulls it down or something. I think oh. it'll, I mean, you're probably on to something because we've already seen the, in, well, well, maybe not the Indoraptor because remember where we seen uh, that one scene with the first trailer where the one mercenary guy gets dragged behind the desk? Oh, yeah, the Indoraptor's, yeah, yeah. The Indoraptor's not big enough to hide behind that desk. That, like, it's not happening. What if I think that was just CGI, to be honest. I think that would be camouflaged. <laughs> I'm oh, just yeah, throwing that out there. <laughs> You're right. The, Ooh, if, there's, if there's like a scene where they're all trying to find out where it is, and it's like they have no idea because it's camouflaged, Ooh. like they're just stuck in a room, and it's like so it's alien and head. predator. Yeah, like predator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you heard it here first. 
So now, and there, another thing that's happening in that new trailer, they're releasing all the dinosaurs. So it's not just the Indoraptor that's getting crazy and having some True. fun. So I, one of my favorite shots is uh, the guy running from the Triceratops. I, I, that's really, if you were there, man, that, that would not be a situation you'd want to be in. So this, yeah, <laughs> he's like, like, I'm just a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? What am I I'm doing? retiring tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to see the Triceratops, I will say that, and uh, hopefully it gets a, a nice little epic kind of shot to kind of, because I mean, it's it's got to be the most popular herbivore dinosaur, right? And it hasn't really gotten any, like, well, you know, time. I in reckon this, either this the Brachiosaur like. or the or the Brachiosaur or the Stegosaurus, I think, are probably, at That's least because they're featured more, aren't they? Uh, yeah, especially the Brachiosaurus. It's extensive in the first one, and even mm. I guess you could say the third movie. I mean, they see that's, one. That's, that's a monster, not a Brachiosaur. <laughs> but the thing about Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdoms, herbivores, you know, breaking out and doing all this stuff is it may be the the one time since Lost World uh, where, and this was very brief, but when the Triceratops, you know, broke out and destroyed Ludlow's yeah. little tent. Uh, we may get to see some extensive uh, stuff on that behalf. Hopefully we see something that's very, uh, I don't want to say something too insane or crazy like Triceratops is like skewering 10 people on its horns and throwing <laughs> them. I mean, that'd be funny. Human but, kebab. <laughs> yeah. No goofy stuff is what you're getting at. Yeah, I, I think that it'll be very cool if we do see it like fuck up some cars and uh, attack other people, you know, sling them. I, I would be fine with it stabbing someone. Just don't like, don't go overboard, you know what I mean? I think that's the one mm-hmm. thing that they could do and hopefully that they won't do. Now that the uh, another question that we have is where is the Mosasaurus because it's apparently escaped. Uh, so how do you think What's that it? will factor in? Well, they're on a boat, aren't they? They it's are everywhere. <laughs> it's like Jaws. Yeah, they, they, they're they like, oh, jump into the water? Oh, wait, we can't jump into the water or we'll die. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good just... question where it could be because I'm pretty sure, I think you, you brought it up, Clayton, to where the Mosasaur was in like a giant pond or lake, wasn't it? There wasn't like a way for him to swim out. None that I could find. It was a big lagoon. I mean, maybe there's a pipe oh. somewhere, but the... F- I'd have to be a big pipe. Yeah, I thought there was like a here. yeah. I thought there was like a big gate that separates the ocean from it. That's what everyone said. Yeah, and I looked back, and there it does look like that in the movie. But uh, like for some yeah. reason, I couldn't find in the map. It looks like it's far away from the ocean. Now the maps could be very inaccurate, but I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm but, not sure how closely they stick to the continuity of the uh, of the actual map. Right. Yeah. And. Another thing about that whole thing is if it did, let's say it broke out and it is like right there on the edge of the ocean and it's, I guess, you know, killing any dinosaurs that get close to the beach or something or fishing ships, you know. But the Mosasaurus, uh, what I think is going to happen is when they're falling off the cliff with a gyrosphere and all these dinosaurs are falling down. Yep. Oh, God. Could you imagine what it would be like if the Mosasaurus showed up right there and just started killing animals? That would be such you know, a cool you, shot, though. They're inside the ball, just like very like musky water. They're ba- not. They're barely able to see anything. You just see like this shadow of this like mosasaur just swimming giant. around you. You'd be like, "Shit, Chris yeah. Pratt, get inside the ball now." That's probably that very likely could happen, and I, I I could almost see it now, like them in the ball, and then the mosasaur comes and kind of like nibbles on it a little bit, and they get a real gnarly shot because that thing's huge, right? Oh, it's just, well, obviously it's the ball really has to like float yeah. to the surface eventually. Eventually. I wonder how they plan on doing that because the Mosasaurus in Jurassic World is completely oversized. It's like 60 feet long. It's, it's, yeah, it's massive. It's like a it's Godzilla like four, monster it's like, four, it's like four megalodons, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. And it, it wasn't anywhere near that size in real life. But there was that shot of it jumping out of the water and attacking a helicopter. I don't know if you guys saw that got released uh, a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago. But no. there's this guy on a ladder trying to get up in the helicopter, and the Mosasaurus jumps out and, like, attacks it. And I was just looking at that like, holy shit, what the fuck is going to go on in this movie? Chaos. That sounds like the scene where that is like a video, I what's a stupid film about, like, Great White Shark that just, like, jumps up to this helicopter and tries, tries to eat it. I, just, <laughs> I can't remember what that was. It was is that Jaws stupid. 2, or is that... Uh... I don't think it was Jaws. It was probably something equally as, as silly as Jaws 3. Shark Attack. One of them sci-fi shark movies. Yeah. There's quite a quite a few of them. 
I, I really hope the Jurassic Park series never falls into that level of, okay, Jaws 4, all right. Yeah. It's on the yeah. verge of having oh, it's like, oh, volcanoes, Mosasaurs attacking helicopters. Like If you wrote this down, it, it would sound like it, so I'm <laughs> hoping they just pull it off really well. Yeah. yeah, I have a feeling they will, but there is the... And that's a valid complaint. That's a valid concern is that people don't want Jurassic Park to be over the top like this they kind of there's a lot of people that still like the the grounded like hey we're pretty much going to a safari yeah and there's dinosaurs there yeah, it was never silly it was never silly it was always done well outside of the kid doing gymnastics to kill a velociraptor right. but like it, yeah. it was always it was always like done well it was always within the realms of reality so what do you think in this new movie? Let's say, what would you least like to be killed by? The Indoraptor, the Tyrannosaurus, or the Mosasaurus? Probably the Indo because it's small enough to where it's still going to have to bite me a few times before I die. <laughs> well, I'd rather be killed by the Mosasaur because if it just eats me in one, that's fine. I'm dead instantly. I think the Indoraptor would take like pleasure killing you. I think it would True. use its claws and you'd be like, let's see the insides of this guy. I'm going to cut you here. I'm going to cut you here. And it, like, it seems here. like the smart kind of thing that would do that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like the idea of that, to be quite honest. I don't want to be tortured while I'm being eaten. <laughs> yeah. Just eat me. That shot like, of just it. kill me already. The shot of it reaching in to get the girl, almost like it's contemplating, hmm, what is this? Why isn't it You running? can tell. He's like, he's he's creeping with him. Uh, he like, it, it's definitely being like, I know you can see me. I know you know what's going on, and <laughs> I'm going to make this as terrifying as possible for you. God, that what if he actually just wants a hook? Shot. He just, he just, he just actually wants a hook. We're just, he's, we're just like, we're just, we're just <laughs> oh, stopping him. The endo's tucking the girl in. You yeah. Heard it. <laughs> it could be a tragic story. Maybe it's not a vicious animal at all. Maybe it's just been abused. It's what if? Pet. Yeah. What if she? Ra- what if she like? Like oh when it was God. young. What if she was there with it? Like from young, 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 and then and she, get he was actually not going to kill her. Yeah, he oh was actually going to help, and then everyone else is trying to kill it. Like, that's actually She's really smart. That'd be a pretty interesting idea. Oh God, we're on the something. <laughs> Movie spoiled. Spoilers ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. What do you guys? Uh, one more question about the the dark kind of atmosphere of this movie and how it may factor into the the suspense. What do you guys think about the way it's photographed and the way it's shot? Com- Love it. Yeah, I do too. It looks a lot more natural. It's, it's a lot less. It's like less saturated. It looks mm. a lot more like the. Well, I guess they were aiming more for the second one. Obviously, it's a bit less earthy because it says. I think it's. So, you know, there's a deck of more of a different environment and everything, so it's less earthy, but it's still got the more gritty tone to it. The CGI looks a lot more realistic because of there's no, or at least there's much, there's a, much of a less blue tint to everything. So, the, like, the, the Brachiosaurus especially looks fantastic. It looks mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the scene of the T-Rex looking at the helicopter could also be do- due to the low lighting. Looks fantastic. Um the, most of the dinosaurs in general just look really good because like the way it's filmed uh, it complements it they there's no stupid scene when you know when they, they, they have the head clamps on the velociraptors and it's so close they could have easily done an animatronic and it would look better but they decided mm-hmm. to just have cgi and you can easily tell that those velociraptors are cgi there's none of that as we can tell from the trailer yeah, and I think that you you brought up another really good point about uh, them looking to emulate the Lost World's visual style kind of uh, similar. It, it looks very similar to the Lost World to me in terms of, I guess you could say, stylistic choices that they've made. There's there's not a lot of, even when we're on the island, I don't see a lot of the happy-go-lucky Jurassic Park, sick Triceratops, Brachiosaurus stuff. It's more of the, uh, wow, this place is trashed and it's about to blow up. And then the whole rest of the movie seems to be dark at night, like the hunter's camp scene in the Lost World, where they're like yeah. r- running to get away from the T Rexes. But uh, mm. it, it does the CGI to me, especially when done at night. Uh, you, you mentioned the beautiful shot of the helicopter and the T Rex like roaring at it. That is classic Jurassic Park, like epic looking stuff, in my opinion. Yeah. That's something that I think could have been present in uh, either of the first two films, or even Jurassic yeah, Park three. Because in the Lost World, like no, not Lost World, in in Jurassic World, the night scenes looked, at least for the T Rex, looked garbage. The the T Rex did not look like it fit in that it environment. Looked really, it looked really off. It, it the Indominus looked pretty good because obviously it wasn't a real dinosaur or something that had a real dinosaur. It wasn't something that you'd seen in previous Jurassic Parks. Compare it to right, so the Indominus yeah. didn't like. They looked pretty good, but the T Rex, you just went, 
like there's something off about it. Like it's too well lit. It's 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 something. It doesn't quite fit the environment. But the T Rex in the new one, like it's glistening. Like it it's, it looks the same. It looks like the same color, same color temperature, the same uh, contrast as the environments in, which uh, makes it look like it actually belongs there. Oh, totally. I agree with you on that, especially when you're comparing the end of Jurassic World to all of the shots of the T-Rex in the new movie. Uh, they really went out of their way to make the T-Rex, I guess they heard some of the complaints, they went out of their way to make the T-Rex more like the T-Rex from part one, which I think is mm. very good. Keep continuity together and stuff yeah. like that. But What do you think about that T-Rex, by the way? It's like 30 years old. Do you think this might be its last hurrah? <laughs> I, uh, I think at this point, I don't I don't think the filmmakers really care about its age. I think they'll kill it when they think they've made enough money by advertising it. Like, <laughs> they could make it last forever. They could say genetics, that's why it's lasting for so long. It's not a normal sure. dinosaur, obviously. Very so possible. They, you yeah. could say it's got enhancing steroids or whatever, make it last longer. Like, they could say what they want. It would be nice to see it, like, go with the heroic hurrah. Like, maybe not even see it die. Just see it, like go away and then die by itself like you you know like if it, something happens where you know it's going to go die it's blatantly on its last legs and it goes away and you're like okay i respect that like it didn't literally just kind of pass out and die some stupid death like it, this has been people's toys for like the past like 25 years people have had this on their shelves people have like watched it for 25 years this is like an iconic people like part of people's childhood they can't just make it go Bleh! dead <laughs> They tried to in part three, not exactly the same <laughs> T-Rex, but the, uh, a T-Rex nonetheless. But I don't know. I don't, I really hope that they, God, I might get some hate mail for this. Uh, I think eventually the T-Rex is going to have to die uh, some way, shape or form. I don't, I'm not, I don't have a personal uh, connection with it on a serious level, even though uh, I do, I did have all the toys and stuff like that. But I just think that. If, if it's the same T-Rex forever, and maybe if they do have diminishing returns, like you said, they probably will off it. I think that the impact of Blue's death, which is probably going to come after the Indoraptor fight, and if it doesn't, then uh, she, she'll die in the next movie. I'm not going to kid yeah. anybody. Look, uh, I think that's something that needs to happen. And I know people are probably going to be complaining about that, but what better way to have this bond between man and dinosaur that's kind of similar to Old Yeller or, uh, you know, some sort of dog movie? I mean, the, mm -hmm. the dog yeah. has to die eventually. So yeah, If the humans put down the T-Rex, that'd be interesting. Like I, the I would actually prefer that, personally. Yeah. The humans kind of created like a, it and they had to kill it. Yep, yep, yep. End the story off, full circle. But there's yeah. also... I, I personally, I I was more attached to the T Rexes from the Lost World than anything. Same here, but, man. Yeah, Same here. Because I had I had the um the bull T Rex uh, yep. toy. I think it was like it had the bite taken off. It was really big and really rubbery. I had that uh, I had that toy sat, like sat in my room all the time, and I loved it because there was a whole the whole thing of it invading San Diego, the whole thing of it having a baby. I was able to connect with it on like a character level. It was there. It was searching for its baby. It has an, a motivation to be mm -hmm. absolutely terrifying. So I was connected with that one a bit more. Yeah, true. You know, I guess in my last word on that. I love Lost World. Y'all can hate me if you want. <laughs> I, I love the Lost World, too. I think a lot of people like the Lost World, actually. I don't think it's quite as hated as other people yeah. want it to be. Uh, don't get me wrong, not a perfect film. No. But, no, yeah. it, personally, I think it's the strongest sequel we've seen so far. Uh, what, what do you think, Alistair? Do you like it, or do you despise it? I love it. I, I bought it on Blu-ray not too long ago, because the only time I've able, been able to like watch it fully was I had the VHS and I would watch it on that, but then I bought the Blu-ray and it looks beautiful. Obviously, some of the uh, effects are a bit dated. You can kind of tell while mm -hmm. watching it on a Blu-ray in 1080p that it, it's some of the effects are completely dated, but it does still looks damn good for, for like 1997 it came out. Mm -hmm. The Lost World is one of the scariest films in this franchise. I would argue that it is the scariest film in the franchise, and I hope, I don't know about you guys, but I want to see Fallen Kingdom out scare me than more than the lost world did i want a much more terrifying experience i want to be sat there in imax I'd, I'd... with my glasses on sitting in my seat and i want to be i want to be sweating at the, at the sight of that indoraptor 
Yeah, it, it, if it doesn't scare, then it, it's not doing its job as far as I'm concerned. But I have high confidence in the direction of Bayona and the suspense that we're going to be receiving in the new film. I think, uh, have you seen A Monster Calls? I have. I saw it in the theater. I was the only one in the theater. So How much did you cry? Dude, it's sad, man. Bayona, he knows how to pull on those hearts. He knows how to play with your emotions, yeah. So hopefully he does the same thing here. Yeah, maybe the audience will cry when uh, when Blue bites the dust. Oh, maybe. She did. Mm. she did. I think she's going to die. I, personally, I think she'll survive this one. If it's a trilogy, they've got to make her die in the next one. Okay, well, that's a good point. If they do want to make one more, they could just add her in and be like, hey, she actually survived by the skin of her teeth and the fight of the Indoraptor. And, but yeah, she's going to die eventually. Yeah. Uh, they'll either I kill her in this one and this they'll one. find she has offspring and then they'll raise the offspring in the next one. Or like they'll just save that for the next one. Like S- Someone had an idea that maybe they'll do that for Rexy. Maybe the T-Rex will lay an egg of some uh, sort. Yeah, that would be kind of a good way to... the leave the t-rex kind of lineage up in the open or you know out in the open for the future yeah it would be cool to see a baby rex again we only saw one like, if like they kept the, the design from the lost world that'd be pretty cool because we've only seen it in that one film i would like to see a rex that's like a little bit older maybe like eight feet tall maybe like a juvenile mm, yeah. uh like that was in the novel because they're like bouncing around jumping they're not you know they're not that smart so they're kind of clumsy so i could see it like picking off guys uh in the law in uh, jurassic park the novel it like plays with one of the park workers like as it's mm. a, if it's a toy and then it Jeez. eventually how it's got it. short arms how did it play with it oh it jumps with its, it keeps, with its it keeps, teeth it keeps, it keeps knocking it over uh the guy's oh, like right. hey hey stop knocking me over get back in your pen and he like starts walking up the road and the t-rex just knocks it over and steps on it and then it look, looks around and like rips a piece of his face off <laughs> That's cute. That's kind of like with the compies, and then the compies are like just kind of sitting there, like, "Hey, what's up?" And yeah, like you so they're like, "Well, fuck you," and they get their friends on him. Yeah, yeah they, I don't care what anyone says. Compies are terrifying. As far yeah, as yeah, it'd be cool to see them have a cool little scene in Fallen Kingdom. All right, guys. So that was our thoughts on the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer that just came out, as well as how scary we think the film will end up being. All right, guys. Thanks for coming down. Hope you guys had a good time. For sure, Clayton, as always, it's a blast, and I know that these do pretty well, and people like to hear us all talk together, so anytime. Yeah, we don't talk about Jurassic Park enough, so it's finally great to have someone to nerd out to. Yeah, for sure. Agree completely. Peace out. Now, before I go, I'd like to thank Chase Acker for joining up with my Game Wardens, and I'd also like to thank my Engine Executives. I want to give a special thanks to all of my park workers and Engine Hunters as well including our newest member, Dat Fiend. It's seriously awesome that you all go out of your way to support this channel in this manner, and I really appreciate everything that you guys do to help it grow and become even better in the future. Now, I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video, and I hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserved it, I would appreciate the like, and I hope that you'll consider subscribing so that you can see me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.